Welcome back, Primal Athletics Radio listeners. I'm super excited to have another guest on the podcast today. Um, good friend of mine, Miguel Dos Santos. He's from um, North Haven CrossFit in Connecticut, a very competitive gym. Uh, they have consistent teams going to regionals and now sanctionals. Uh, the owner was a games athlete. A lot of high caliber athletes come out of that gym. So um, we got a lot of things to pick today and just go through some conversation. Sweet. I'm excited to be here. Um, happy to uh, just talk with some people in the midst of this quarantine, see some faces, um, share some knowledge we both have from each other and just see where this goes. It's cool. I'm yeah, excited. drop some knowledge bombs. Um, so Miguel and I played college football together. Um, we studied physical education together in, at school. Mm -hmm. And then once we got out, we both found CrossFit as kind of the, um, I would say the saving grace once we were done being competitive athletes in college, because I think for a lot of us, there's that void that's left once you're done being an athlete. Um, I know a lot of people, a lot of friends of mine who are in that position and um, CrossFit was kind of that next step. So we both went into being CrossFit athletes and eventually got into CrossFit coaching. So that's how we're mm -hmm. here today. Zach, was that kind of similar experience for you? In regards to finding CrossFit? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, too, played sports my whole life growing up and, and played after high school for a bit. And when that, when that ended, there was definitely a void left there. And uh, when, when I found CrossFit, it was like, all right, here it is. This is what I was looking for. Right. I remember the community as soon as I to the... the... Oh, my go ahead. Zach. No, I was just going to say, I remember as soon as I walked into the gym, I saw, like, one workout, and then I did one, and... I'm like, this is what I needed. Like, it's like something I was looking for. It's something that you couldn't get just like in just like a normal gym. Yeah. I remember getting my ass kicked by the first workout I did and like being on my hands and knees. And I looked at the coach and I was like, what the hell just happened? Because it was like a single couplet. And I was like, this looks really easy. And I got my ass kicked and I was like, all right, I need to sign up for this. Like, I'm, I'm in the right place. <laughs> remember my first workout was fight gone bad. And as soon as I finished Ooh. the workout, I probably lied on the ground for like a half hour. <laughs> It went, we very that, bad. it went very bad. We did that workout as a class wad, like right before um, all the quarantine stuff happened. And I remember sitting there doing the workout like, wow, like it's kind of humbling to see like, all right, this still sucks. Like it still hurts. But like just the level of growth you have from just doing CrossFit and being in there a while is something mm -hmm. just cool to reflect on. Big time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Adaptability piece, like, um, coming from any athletic background or even if you even more so if you're not coming from an athletic background to see your capacity change um so vastly through the crossfit mm -hmm. methodology i think like that's one of the coolest things um to see as a coach and to experience as an athlete yeah absolutely so miguel tell us a little bit about uh north C north haven crossfit uh, North Haven CrossFit, we're a gym located in this North Haven, Connecticut. Um, our owners are Kurt and Courtney Garceau. Um, Kurt started the gym nine years ago, actually yesterday. So we had our little anniversary, which is cool. Um, wish we could have done like a big anniversary party, but hopefully we'll save that when we come back from quarantine. Um, we're, I, our gym's pretty decent size. Um, I don't know the exact square footage, but we're one of the larger gyms in the area, which is cool. Um, it's our second building that we've had. Um, Kurt and Courtney, when they started the gym, they started in a little small facility, um, like a couple barbells, a couple rowers, that was it. And they were able to grow the gym, move it to another area, um, which is where we are now in North Haven. Um, we have a substantial amount of members. I'd say our members sit around like anywhere between 200, a couple more than that. Um, overall, it's just a very tight knit community. That's one thing I always think we can get across it community very very tight-knit community like you can walk in and be greeted by every single person in the gym like like they're your best friend like it's 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 pretty cool just to see the community that we have um when when i would think of a gym think of like a crossfit gym um the thing of community never really came up because just like just from being like a football player going to the gym it's like you have like a program a set thing you have to do and CrossFit is like, all right, we're all in this together. So we're all here. It's a big community, which is cool. Yeah, I'd say it's uh, very similar on our end. Primal Athletics, uh, we operate two 
CrossFit gyms, CrossFit Nashville, CrossFit Sohegan, all under the same umbrella. And um, yeah, it's similar size wise with the two combined. And I, I'd say the same thing, like everybody knows each other, um, very active, engaged uh, in each other's kind of social lives and knows everybody knows everybody's names and their kids mm -hmm. and et cetera. So I think that's a very cool thing uh, when it mm -hmm. comes to the CrossFit, CrossFit style working out. Mm -hmm. um, you guys just recently competed at Wadapalooza, no? We did, yeah. Um, so when regionals went away, even before regionals were to happen, Wadapalooza was something that um, a lot of people in the gym always aspired to do. And since they canceled regionals, Wadapalooza became like our Super Bowl. Um, we have a lot of our competitive athletes that train year-round just for a chance to make it down to Wadapalooza. Um, so not this past February, but the one before uh, was the first time I ever went down. Uh, it was cool. We had, I went down, I did like a little individual uh, competition that we had a couple of teams. But then this past year was when we really kind of like ramped everything up. We had three, three teams of four co-ed go down and compete in the RX division, which was really cool to see. Um, and then we had a, one master's athlete and one scaled beginner athlete that um went down too so overall i think we had so we had four twelve we had like 14 athletes down there from the same gym all competing um wow. which was a cool, it was a cool accomplishment to see um just from like the coaching staff but a lot of the members that went down are also coaches but um the community that rallied behind us even from back home was awesome and just the experience of being there um just like even being in like the athlete village or walking around it's like this huge fitness aspect and in a world that um in some parts of the world where people's lives are very dedicated to fitness and a lot of people's aren't um to be around a community and like an event like that of all like-minded people is, is uh like a once in a lifetime experience yeah it's gonna be a trip like i could imagine being like a non-crossfitter or somebody who's not even really into fitness at all and like stumble into Wadapalooza and just be like what is this place <laughs> Like, it's like everybody we're walking around people. shirtless with six packs. You're like, what's going on here? <laughs> thousands of them. Yeah. It was cool to see, like, because you'll even be walking around and out of nowhere, you'll see, like, like a high-level crossfitter. Like, I remember walking around seeing, like, Patrick Bellner just, like, 10 feet away from me. I'm like, this is crazy. Very cool. It is pretty cool. Yeah. But, it's um, something that yeah. uh, we haven't really experienced. That. In our gym, like, we don't have a uh, – I'd say a big pool of those competitive athletes, though we are starting to develop some. We had one individual go to the games as a teen, uh, Tyler Thurber, yep. back awesome. uh, a couple of years. So that was, I wasn't around for that, but that's really cool to have her flag hanging in the gym. And um, I think as we go forward, we're going to, going to try to get more people into that con uh, competitive side. And um, I know we have a team qualified for the Asbury park games coming up. Um, now that everything's pushed forward, though, it's all kind of up in the air, but yeah, it'll be cool to, to get some more competitive stuff going on on our end. Yeah, and the cool thing with the sanctionals um, compared to when regionals were a thing, like there's more sanctionals, so it gives more people more opportunity to experience an event like this. Um, I, I think Ashbury is the closest one to our area. Um, I wish they had one up in like Massachusetts where they used to have like the East Coast Championships. Yeah, It'd be cool. Like it's it's fun because like flying down to Miami is like it's it's an expensive trip. I'm not gonna lie, but um, to be able to even like fly down there and be in like the whole heat, sun, party atmosphere in Miami was cool. But to have one close to home would be a lot better. And it gives some people like I was I was gonna say before I just got off track. Um, like. Everybody in the gym, if anybody even wants to try to do a competition, it's just like super easy. Sign up online, try it out. Like, you never know what'll happen. And right. the fact that they have like master's divisions and like certain scale divisions, it gives like even some of the less competitive members of the gym uh, uh, an opportunity to qualify for an event like this. Yeah, it opens up the, the possibilities to get into the competitive side of the sport and um, mm -hmm. not to say that's what everybody needs to do. That's not necessarily the goal. The goal no. is just yeah. overall fitness and, and better quality of life, but it is, it is fun if you're spending all that time working on your fitness to put it to the test against other people sometimes. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing you have a good amount of people at your gym too, who aren't into the sport of, of CrossFit. 
Um, yeah. do you guys, do you guys separate the sport between the, the health aspect? Is everybody kind of integrated in with each other? Like how do you guys kind of approach both at the same time? So our mentality is our class workouts come first. Our mm -hmm. class workouts are our bread and butter. It's what we, um, it's the pinnacle of our training. Um, if you have, we have a large enough space where, um, if people were to come in and say, work on something that's not with the class workout, um, we can just it's just um everything with the class comes first like say if the class is doing box jumps we ask like people don't use boxes for their own personal training it's like the class comes first and that's the same thing with our workout um we have members that kind of sometimes follow their own personal programming but we like to have everybody together because that just keeps building the community aspect if like say i'm working out with one of our members jess she's probably the fastest person on burpees i've ever seen in my life and you have me, her, and then Kurt's uncle, Jer, who's, um, is, he's an older athlete, is later 60s, working out all three of us next to each other. We all push each other in all different aspects in the same class workout. Everybody's getting the same stimulus. So that's, that's kind of one of my, why our class workouts are the best. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I think each gym, like people separate between like competitive programming and then their own class programming. But in my opinion, it kind of creates more of like a divide than anything i agree um, that's, that's that, the same yeah. uh, that, that's the same theory we hold too so i'm glad to hear you guys carry that as well and it's, it's good for the general public to hear uh knowing that when they come into a gym even if you do see some big buff people there is there isn't much of a divide there if, it, if there's no yeah. divide you guys are working out yeah. together you're suffering together and it is one big community yeah and the cool thing is like if like we have other members that want to do other things everybody always wants to jump into what other people are doing like, I, I've walked in the gym before, seen people in the corner, and I walk up, I'm like, oh, what are you guys doing? They're like, oh, we're going to do Winda. I'm like, sick, let's do Winda. So we'll, a couple of us will jump in. It's, it's cool to see everybody wants to train together. There aren't many people that, hardly any, that even just want to sit and just work out by themselves. I think that's kind of rare when you walk into a CrossFit gym. Yeah, I think part of the CrossFit magic, too, is that, like, it, it's almost, like, designed to uh, – push out big egos like you mm -hmm. you're not going to really survive in a community environment like that where there's so many variable so so much of a variation in people's skill levels and stuff you're not going to survive if you're in there like peacocking you yeah. know especially in a bigger gym with like the proper leadership and all that um those people tend to stick out like a sore thumb so i think that's one of my favorite parts of crossfit is like it's like being on a big team, but everybody's oriented towards the same thing. And if you're, if you're not part of the team, it's very apparent to everybody and you're not going to oh, laugh. Absolutely. absolutely. No, I, you couldn't have said any better. Um, I want to just get into, uh, obviously like we're all in this, this quarantine self-isolation thing together. How are you guys handling that as a gym? Um, I know you've set up Zoom classes. We talked a little bit about that before we started recording here. Um, we're doing the same thing. We've loaned out a bunch of equipment, trying to do as much as we can to provide service to our members while they're out of the uh, physical gym. What kind of measures are you guys taking at uh, North Haven to do that? Uh, we've been doing uh, very similar things. Uh, we run three Zoom classes a day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So basically our weekly schedule is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have a 6.30 a.m. class. Then we have a 9 a.m. class on Zoom. Um, that's all week, even Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday, we have an only class at 4.30. And then we have a 5.30 class Monday through Friday. Um, just trying to give all our members as much opportunity as they can to access us, access the gym. Um, is kind of key in a time like this. Um, even, so we went out equipment. Um, we have a huge list of that, that everybody, um, what they have. But even with our holy class, uh, it's tough because half our members, some have, some do have barbells at their house that they're able to do. So we have a class there with the, just giving somebody else another opportunity to work out is pretty cool. Um, another thing we've been doing just to keep everybody engaged on Fridays at 6.30, we have a little like, North Haven CrossFit happy hour, which is cool to have, um, just to see everybody join. Last week was our first one. I think we had like 30, 40 members in it. And it's just, it's tough to have a conversation, but it's cool to see everybody's faces in the little Zoom screen. Um, just get that little social contact. Um, 
One thing that I think helped set us up going into this quarantine, we didn't really know that it was going to happen at the time, but when we got back from Wadapoos, it was like, I think we had two weeks before the quarantine really hit, two to three weeks. And um, so our owner, Kurt, runs a photography business as well. So he's really well versed in uh, videography and photography. So we started making little like keys to six, well, I can't even say it. keys to success videos. We've been uploading on YouTube um, just to have like different techniques and stuff. It started off with like rowing techniques, toes to bar, um, split jerk. And then as the quarantine happened, they started to develop more into at home workouts that we're releasing to the public um, just to kind of put out content. Um, just show people that even in a time of quarantine, they're still, you're still able to get your fitness on, still able to do what you need to do. Um, stay fit so that hopefully as soon as we can get back into the gym and just keep pushing towards what we were doing before. Yeah. Yeah. We're taking very similar um, measures on this end. And um, I think putting out that programming that can be like the body weight programming mm -hmm. is huge especially that like you guys are doing as well, pushing it out to the public to show that like, Hey, this obviously we're giving our members more because they're, they're paying members and they're going to get, you know, more content, but just to have some options for the overall community to choose to do these online uh, body weight workouts is like sending the message of like, Hey, there's, there's no excuse to, you know, go down a bad path right now. There is, more so an opportunity to stay healthy and fit because it's your best guard against this this virus really oh, absolutely but no yeah, absolutely much. and it's even like we were able to do certain things to help out our members it's cool to see like our community kind of like bounce back from this um one of our members her dad and her recently built a rig in their backyard like it's got a pull-up bar rings wall ball target and it's like this person's like so dedicated to the sport. Like it's just cool to see that um, even despite the circumstances that we have in front of us, like people are still trying to advance their fitness levels and trying to stay active. Like everything from like members making boxes, their own homemade boxes in their house to creating workouts, working out with their kids. It's, it's cool. It's just cool to see. It's inspiring. Yeah. It is inspiring. I got to give a quick shout out to one of our members. I know there's multiple members, but this one, she's been very consistent in my Zoom classes, Shannon Fagan. She's a nurse, and she comes on to Zoom during her little lunch break in her school with the face mask and the gloves and just gets after it for 45 minutes with whatever's in the room, her purse as a, as a dumbbell or whatever. And it's like, we can make all these excuses, and we're at home, and mm -hmm. there's people on the front lines like – Shannon and all the other nurses and first responders and this and that um and they're still getting after it and yeah, there's no excuse awesome. for us not to that's awesome Ty yeah so quick shout out um this whole training at home thing I feel like is I I'm starting to enjoy it because it's forcing me to it's forcing me to like hold myself a little more accountable because I don't have I don't have people there to, you know, bounce off of or, or it's, it's like more internal motivation now. Um, is that something that you've experienced like in your, you know, personal training is being at home alone is what's the difference for you? Um, for me, being home alone is way different than working out at the gym. Um, I'm basically going from being at the gym, working out with everybody there to being home like this and working out by yourself. The Zoom classes definitely help. Um, I try to work out with at least the class going on in front of me so I can kind of hold myself a little more accountable. Like me as an athlete, if I work out by myself, I'm going to be a little more down on myself, take my time a little more. But if I know even through that screen, someone's there doing the same workout, it's like, all right, I'm going to push, push myself, push off this person. Um, it's different. I'm more of an extrovert kind of like at heart. So me working out with somebody else pushes me more and I get a little more joy out of it. So it's tough. It's, it's, it's tough, but it's, it's something that we're going to have to do. It's like going into it. It's, I would never think I'd be doing cleaning jerks in my garage, but here we are. <laughs> here we are. Yeah. It's kind of cool found because, oh, my bad. Oh, what were you saying? That was okay. Um, it's cool to see, like, even without even 
trying to introduce other people to the CrossFit community. Like I live in a condo complex, so it's cool like working out my garage door open. My neighbors are walking by seeing me work out. They're like, oh, what is this kid doing? Oh, CrossFit? Oh, it start a conversation like that, introduce more people to it. Hmm. For, throughout all this, I've actually found it nice. And while I'd rather be in the gym, of course, working out with other people, it's been mm -hmm. nice to kind of like readjust goals for a little bit. And uh, mm -hmm. I've been, I haven't even been timing my workouts. I, I don't even put a clock on. I think it's been real nice to not race the clock and focus on yeah. good movement and just focus on just moving as well as I've ever moved before. And it's been a nice little relief. I am looking forward to get back into the gym and, and around people, but it has been kind of nice to do the workouts. I'll still have the Zoom class up sometimes too to have that little extra push and incentive, but it's been nice to kind of readjust goals for a little bit, uh, not worry about competing too much and just worry about moving well. We've been doing a mobility class every night, uh, Monday through That's Friday. Awesome. Uh, mobility is something I, I definitely don't do enough of. So I'm doing that for two weeks in a row now. I'm already so much more flexible. I use flexible in air quotes. I'm not flexible at all. <laughs> it's, already, it's already gotten so much better. So little silver linings here, um, getting more flexible, more time for mobility, just moving well, and just kind of no pressure of the clock, just moving well and enjoying working out. Yeah, more time to focus on the small stuff. The stuff that's going to exactly. help you out in the long run. Yeah, for we, sure. I remember she's also a coach. She puts out mobility on Facebook, her own mobility programming, which is cool. Some people have been following it. That's awesome. That's really good. Yeah, you did. You never had more time to work on yourself than now, whether it's doing no. more mobility or working out or reading a book or writing, whatever it is you've always said, like, I wish I had time to do this. Well, now you yeah, got you time. Got time, time. For Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> Get better at burpees. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I had a, if you watched the, the last couple episodes, Levi Daniels, who was one of our guests, we we're in a group chat with a couple other guys. And I was like, you know what, man, if I can come out of this quarantine, like with the same baseline fitness, I went in, I'll be happy. Like if I can maintain what I had when it all mm -hmm. went down. And his response was, there's no excuse not to improve your fitness. You should be better than when you come out of it. And I was like, you know what? You're damn right. I should yeah. be. Yeah, you're right. I should be. I should, I should PR something while I'm in this thing. Like, I think it's all, it really is all your, your mindset. Like you can still get better. You don't have to be in a class. You don't have to be, you know, swinging around on pull-up bar every day to get better. There's yeah. a lot of stuff that you can, for me, like I'm choosing, uh, trying to reprogram my snatch because that's always been an issue so i'm doing like a ton of pvc work um a lot more odd object stuff because that's something that i don't know like i'm good with a barbell but now i'm working with mm -hmm. sandbags and med balls and stuff that i normally wouldn't like the odd object uh more strongman stuff and i'm like now's a perfect time to do the things i suck at yeah yeah you know? i remember you see their coach castonia said this something get comfortable with being uncomfortable and like this is like an uncomfortable training time for a lot of people so now it's just getting comfortable doing something that you don't really want to do. Like body weight movements for me aren't one of my strong suits. Maybe other athletes, it's the same way, but it's something you can focus on, something you can get better at. Just like you said, working on the odd object stuff, working on the snatches, it gives you time to dive into, dive into the details. Yep. Yeah. Setting those, like those small goals for yourself of like as, as uncomfortable and inconvenient as it is to not be able to do, your normal stuff it's it's an opportunity to to shore up all the weaknesses you have in the link mm -hmm. and then when you come back to the gym in, in a month or two months or whatever it is you're going to be a better athlete because you took the time while you had the time to fix the things that were wrong absolutely i think it's going to bring us back to kind of like the baseline of what cross it was like moving well the constantly varied functional movements uh, you're not going to get any more varied than we are right now uh, obviously we don't have a lot of equipment, so we got to get creative with a lot of stuff, but more the functional movements are more just moving well too. Like now's a good time. If you've had a nagging injury for the last few months or even few years, now's the time to take care of it. Maybe you don't have a barbell at home, so you're not going to be under any heavy weights for the next month or two. Work on your, your air squats. Say when you're doing back squats, your knees hurt. Well, let's try to fix that. Let's try to do some mobility. Let's do some perfect air squats. Let's just work with just body weight movements to try to get that better. And like I said, like now's the best time to work on yourself. Uh, if you're always looking for time. So try to find the silver lining in it. Maybe just because you don't have any heavy weights at home. You can just, like said, just hope to maintain. Like you can get better now. And even if that better just means you're more mobile or you're, you're injury free, that, that's way better than you were before. For sure. Absolutely. That, that's yeah. going to be my big takeaway from that conversation I had was like, I didn't realize I was in that mind state of like, oh, I just want to maintain. Like I just, I just hope I don't lose 
my muscle ups. I hope I don't lose whatever. But it's like that that's the wrong approach. And I'm realizing that it's like I, I can get better. I can be a better athlete at the end of this mm-hmm. thing. You know, yeah. it's an opportunity. Yeah. And better doesn't have to be just a PR on a barbell. Like Miguel said, better could be getting better at burpees. Maybe you're 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 better at burpees than you've ever been your whole life, or you fix an injury, or just you're out now you're going running. You've always hated running and now you're a runner after this. Like better can just be doing something you haven't done or put off and, and improved on that. Mm. Absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head, Zach, when you said, like, this is bringing us back to the roots of what CrossFit is and why it even came about in the first place. Like, we put out that podcast, like, day two of quarantine, um, saying you're more prepared for this than you thought you were because Mm -hmm. you're a CrossFitter. And that's what CrossFit's designed to do is make you prepared for the unknown, the unknowable. There's no more unknown and unknowable than we're in right this moment, you know? So it's like, this is what we train for. We don't train to be better at doing a hundred pull-ups in a gym. We, we train to be adaptable in life and exactly. it's the perfect time to like execute. And if you've Absolutely. listened to any, any speeches from Glasson over the last five, 10, 15 years, he's talking about using CrossFit as the front lines to combat disease. I mean, this is it right here. We got a disease mm-hmm. going on. You're going to give up CrossFit just because you're at home and not at a gym now. Like this is the time to do it. Maybe it's different. Maybe you're, again, you're not doing pull-ups or barbells or, or ring muscle ups all the time, but focus on what you got to focus on. Keep keep improving your health. Exactly. Facts. Keep keep that immune system boosted. Exactly. Absolutely. That's nice. true. It's another good time, like to focus on like your diet per se. Like to be completely honest, my diet's been decent at best, being at home all the time. But it's it's something you can control. Like say you're. Say you're never really holding yourself accountable to something like that, being at home, cooking all your meals for you, not able to go out to like a restaurant or anything like that. It's like, all right, maybe I could focus on dialing in my nutrition while I'm home. Just something to keep in mind. Definitely. That's a good one too, because you are probably surrounded by a bunch of snacks right now. Maybe you went to Costco a few weeks ago and bought half the store. So uh, <laughs> take, <laughs> take that time to focus on, yeah, yeah. focus on eating well and uh, not, not overeating. Cool. Well, I think that'll do it for today. Sweet. Guys, that was awesome. Thank you for having me. Uh, to the Primal Athletics members, thank you for uh, listening. And um, it's yeah, been anytime. a pleasure. It's awesome. Cool. I hope this uh, – maybe we can share this to the North Haven CrossFit community as well, and we can intermingle a little bit. Um, yeah, absolutely. You guys. Yeah. All pushing through this same thing. So, yeah. thanks again. Stay, we'll stay, see you guys. Stay healthy. Yes, sir. Of course. Thanks, we'll guys. see you guys next yeah, episode. Take care.